but I wanted to talk about, you know, uh, junior mistakes that they've they've either made themselves at, at, when they were junior or at, in the mentoring process that I've seen uh, juniors make. If anyone wants to kick that off. I think the first the first thing that I see people skipping, you know, in the beginning of the careers is those uh, background, like the theory, understanding why they are doing what they are doing. What was the reason? The reason. What was the reason? reason? For example, in my field, talking about data, we have a lot of uh, courses uh, explaining how to create data pipelines, data transformations. And that's cool, that's important. Uh, this is how we implement what we are working on. But what am I implementing? And is this like something that I can use widely like in every situation? Usually not. Usually you need to understand each situation and choose like the best approach to solve that issue. And if you do not know, for example, data modeling, that it's one of the basics to work as a data engineer, you know how to implement, but usually you don't know like the best approach to choose for that client specifically. So that's something that we need to refactor in the future. Sometimes it looks easy to do or something that will solve the problem that moment, but it's not scalable. If it's not scalable, you will have to refactor that. And sometimes when you already have something in production and you have to change that, it's very difficult to do. So if you think, well, plan what you're going to do and, and, and start encoding after validating this idea, this logic, your chance of success is much higher. So focusing in understanding the backgrounds, the theory and stuff like this is so important. That's great advice. Uh, Greg, anything that comes to mind? Yeah, it's something that changed my mind uh, when I was starting to be some somewhere around meet software engineer that I answered the question, why I am programming? Why am I coding? Why did you let yourself do this? Yeah. You, for what reason I producing the code? And uh, it changed my mind completely because I learned, you know, I learned to code. I wanted to start a job. So I wanted to code as much as I can. <laughs> as I could. So I, I I coded, coded, coded because it was, you know, I'm a coder. But yeah, when I asked myself, mm, what is the reason for this code? Uh, now I know that we are doing it not to code itself, but to solve someone's problem. And it is the most important thing in our job to solve problems. <laughs> so we'll uh, try to force our code to solve some problems, but maybe it's just a, you know, change of mindset or change in the process somewhere and there will be no problem which you will have to code because you can solve it without a single line of code. Do we have a huh? You know, it's a completely change of mind <laughs> mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, my beginning and for my current <laughs> career state. Absolutely. No, that's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that um, the beginners, the first job seekers and junior devs, um, yes, it is hard for them to, to like to open this door, the first door to find that job. And um, especially for those who are trying to do the career change, yeah. they sometimes forget and dismiss the job that they did before. And I would recommend to make the future employer to see that you have those soft skills and maybe some of part of hard skills that can be easily transferred to your new role that you're looking for. If you're learning, show your learning curve, show what did you learn and how did you do it. Um, and I would say <laughs> for a lot of us who would say, I want to learn the code, is this jumping like, they start with, okay, I saw that everyone's learning Python, let me learn Python. And then, oh, now I see that everyone's learning JavaScript, let me jump to JavaScript. So in a couple of months, they juggling through different languages, different like small courses in Udemy without having like a um, clear path of what they're looking for. And I do realize that when you start, it is a little bit harder for you to say, hey, I actually want to be a full stack or back end or front end. So it's Obviously, it's only by doing it, I would say, you get a little bit more of understanding if you like it or not. I like that! So it's also like where you want to end up and maybe you're like really in love with fintech and or maybe you're like really into Web3 and blockchain. So ask and see what the path to get there 
and stick to it without jumping it, like moving a lot. And in your LinkedIn, try to showcase that path. And also it's um, try to do something for free. I mean, like, for example, you're trying web development, you have your bootcamp behind you with the yep. JavaScript type of thing. And hey, reach out to your friends, maybe do a website for them. Um, do a website for yourself. Uh, yep. Try to see where you can do like some help for some kind of foundations. So I would say that this is important thing for the beginners, that the company just has to see that you're willing to learn. I can handle whatever he throws at me. You're there for it, like you're serious in it. And I would say that the mistake afterwards is for example, you have a year of experience, so it's like you already have your experience, so try to make best of it. Show yep. your your experience in the in the above section, in the LinkedIn section. Make the most of it. Showcase that one year and what you did in that year. Absolutely. No, that's really good advice. And and um, to kind of expand on, on what you said, yeah, when, when I was in college, I didn't really know if, what, you know, what area I was gravitating towards, if I you know, liked back end or, or front end. So that's exactly what I did. I started a side project that required front end, back end, had a database, all of that. Um, and I could do all of it, but I was better at the back end and enjoyed the back end better. Um, than, and, that, and that kind of helped set the trajectory, you know, after after I graduated to where I was, uh, you know, going. So that's really good advice. So whether it is, uh, yeah, contributing to open source, doing your own thing, or or a very uh, good suggestion that you, you know, a local foundation or a nonprofit, something like that, anywhere you can kind of help out and just get some of that experience and learn what um, you know what feels kind of right for your your skill set and interests is uh, is really good advice.